For at TV, the world is thinking. An area that we do uh, a lot of work in is uh, elder law. And the, the challenge in doing elder law work is that so many couples are invisible and are not able to be found and are not out, especially they've been out for much of their lives. And then as they start to age and worry about access to health care or nursing home care or assisted living care, they go back in the closet because they're worried about what kind of care they're going to get, and many of them living in poverty. Marriage equality. Now, this was an issue that I will admit I was brought somewhat kicking and screaming to because as the radical lesbian feminist that I was, I thought we should just throw off the patriarchy and in marriage was a part of patriarchy and we should just not want to have anything to do with it. Well, you know what? That's just tired. And <laughs> because the fact of the matter is, it's, you know, I sort of came to it, although I will say I'm much more of a believer for many reasons than, um, than this particular analogy, but I came or finally came around to it the same way because the same way I felt about the military. You know, don't much care for that either, but it's going to exist. It's not going anywhere, and if anybody can join it, we should be able to too. <laughs> so I now don't quite feel the same way about marriage, having gotten married last year and very happy. <laughs> so I feel like I should say I'm happy that I did so. Um, but what we are finding is that so many couples, this is like that story in Uinta. If the, we have communities and states and whole regions where our relationships are not recognized and they do not matter and they are demeaned, it, that is shaming to young people and it is shaming to our communities. In addition to just the denial of rights around child access to being recognized as a legal parent of one's children, to hospital visitation, estate planning, all of that. You've got all the rights, but the dignitary harms are enormous, and those will only be solved by full access to the same institution that everyone else is permitted to take part in. Um, we've seen particularly, and this particularly impacts LGBT folks who are economically disadvantaged having to find a lawyer in their communities or to be able to put together some patchwork of legal protections and then when tragedy strikes and it inevitably will to some percentage these are couples that are so marginalized and families that are so marginalized where a family member blood relative swoops in and is able to take all the assets of the relationship because the couple was not able to protect themselves so, uh, obviously covered some of this. You know, this, the, the, the main reason we do our marriage work and continue to do that advocacy is because we believe, just as a central tenet of our work, that sexual orientation is irrelevant. Gender identity is irrelevant to one's common humanity with other humans on this planet and certainly with the rest in this country. In the work that we did on our marriage case in California, we were able to bring together, and this was, this was the glass half full piece of this work, a huge array of civil rights, uh, business, union, labor, um, and religious organizations to support the right to marry and to support uh, ending the exclusion of same-sex couples from the right to marry. The Supreme Court in California received a lo the largest number of friend of the court briefs in the marriage case that they had ever received in their history. And that was <laughs> testament to the wide range of folks that came together to support this basic human right and civil right. 